Okay guys, we're back. So um, this is where we left off and I'm scrolling down now. So this is page two. As I told you, this, this handout looks really long, but um, it's because of the information that's here. So as you can see, I've got a lot of quotes from this source, from Evans Pritchard. I want to contrast that with what I have from Einstein was right, from wire you can see there's only a few quotes here like three good quotes i've got four good quotes from einstein was right but from evans pritchard it was like the gift that just kept on giving and so i got quite a few quotes from here that i can use now um, when we come back next week we'll be working on how we can integrate those well, really in the next coming weeks, we'll be working with how to integrate these quotes and summary, paraphrase, paraphrase and quoting, and um, how to do them, how to do those things well, how to integrate those sources into your own writing. But for now, um, I just want to show you what this looks like once you've started pulling quotes. So that's step one of what I'm asking you to do is pull quotes. Now, that's something you're going to have to do on your own in order to do the assignment for this week. So the assignment for this week hinges on what you accomplished last week. And what you accomplished last week was getting your rough outline together. So um, you already have that handout that's posted in last week's activities. But I just wanted to include a little bit uh, of a reminder of what that is. So for you, that's what you're going to be using in order to do this pulling quotes and organizing your research assignment or activity. Okay, so this is the rough outline and the example. This was my working thesis, as you recall. These are the questions I had come up with that I organized um, with Roman numerals, and then this ended up being what could be my outline for my entire essay. Okay, so what I want to show you is this. This is your assignment. So you're going to take the rough outline that you comp that you put together, everything that you compiled with all of the questions um, from last week, and after you pull your quotes, like I just showed you from the sources that you found, then you're going to put it all together. So this is organization. A lot of this is going to make your writing process a lot more seamless, a lot easier, and stress-free. Okay, so we've got the rough outline with research. This is the thing that you are handing in to me. This is what you're going to email me via my Gmail account. You're going to share it with me or just email me an attachment so that I can take a look and know that you're on the right track. Now, there are so many reasons for doing this, but with every research paper that I write, and I've written quite a few by now, um, with all of those, I always do a system very similar to this one. And I like this because you can organize your writing before you actually have a lot of writing that you need to move around. This makes it so much easier um, when it comes time to write because now you're just trying to link ideas together. Um, when I have a really thorough outline, sometimes what I like to do is, this is my rough outline that I have, my Roman numerals, and then I've taken the sources, the quotes that I found, the quotes I pulled, and I'm trying to figure out where they should go. So here's what you need to ask yourself in order to do this assignment. When you're organizing your research, you need to look at the first Roman numeral, so in my case, it's why are honeybees important? What are all the things that I can say to my reader to prove to them that honeybees are really important to us, whether we realize it or not? Not only are they important, but our survival, our very survival, hinges upon their survival, okay? That those two things are connected. So I need to make it clear for my reader how those two things are connected because that's not gonna be something that's automatically known. So as I'm looking through all of my research and all of my quotes on these pages, what I'm trying to do is figure out what quotes have I pulled that help to answer these questions. Okay, so why are honeybees important? A good way of explaining why that is. Let me rationalize some of my choices for you. Almost a third of global farm output 
depends on animal pollination largely by honeybees. If that's not good arguing, I don't know what is. <laughs> if that's not a great resource to bring up at this point in time to my reader, I don't know what is. Now, why are honeybees important? That's probably going to be my first body paragraph right after my introduction so that I can give my reader a little bit of background information that they probably don't know yet. So I need to bring everybody up on the same page. Here's another example. One of my other selections, between 80% and 90% of pollination comes from domesticated honeybees. Again, how can you argue with that, right? So the idea is this, as I'm writing, I'm trying to answer my own questions that I've come up with. But what should happen ideally is that at the same time, you should be answering many of your readers' questions as they will arise to them. And one of the first questions that should arise to your reader, if they're really thinking about what you're saying and this whole working thesis, well, what does one have to do with the other? In my very first body paragraph, I'm attempting to tackle that very large question in a really simple and direct way so that it's abundantly clear so that once I start my argument, everyone is on one accord. That's the goal. So um, as you can look, some of my other quotes support this exact thing, but it actually, the other two actually serve to give a little bit more detail about pollination because I think uh, one thing that I didn't know initially when I was looking into this was, well, when pollinates, there are other pollinators other than honeybees. So could that suffice for us? And so we learned certain things like this quote, and this is why I included this in this particular uh, paragraph. The stables of corn, wheat, and rice are all pollinated by when. Okay, so that's good to know. So yes, while some key crops are pollinated by wind, and this is the next quote, however, animal pollination is essential for nuts, melons, berries, and plays varying roles in citrus fruits, apples, onions, broccoli, cabbage, sprouts, so on and so forth, so that we can then see how critical and crucial honeybee pollination really is for us. Um, so this is my first paragraph. So like I said, that's why I said use the sources that you have um, at, at this time. It's very possible that you're only using the five from your annotated bit, but you could be using more. And I'm going to tell you this is going to make your life easier in a few weeks if you compile as many sources as you're, you think you will need right now to do this assignment. So if you have all your 10 sources, which I know some of you do, and that's very exciting. Um, and if you're, you're compiling your 10 sources this week, um, which is also very exciting, you should be trying to see how the research fits into your argument, fits into your questions. How does the research help to prove your point? How does it help to answer your questions? I can't tell you how many times I found some really interesting quotes or cool quotes when I'm doing a research paper or a project, and I just can't seem to make it fit into the argument that I'm making. So this is to avoid that from happening to you, from you finding a bunch of sources that are really cool, pulling a bunch of quotes that sound really good, and then not having a place for them in your paper. They're not functional for you unless they have a place in your paper. So this is how I did this. This is the first um, body paragraph. And then moving forward, I've got a second one. I've got a third one. I know I'm touch I just realized I'm touching my face a lot because I'm recording this. But I have a little secret. If you stay home, you can touch your face as much as you want. <laughs> okay, so stay safe. Stay safe obey the quarantine. <laughs> okay, respect the lockdown. So you can touch your face. <laughs> um, okay, so same thing for the second paragraph. I did the same thing. I said, okay, what's the problem? What is colony collapse disorder? And I pulled all the quotes that I found from those three sources that you saw in the previous pages. That would help to answer those questions. I did the same thing for paragraph three. I did the exact same thing for paragraph four. 
And now we're at paragraph five. Hold on. So did you notice how I have a lot of quotes under Roman numeral one? So I feel like five quotes, four or five quotes in the first body paragraph, um, that's pretty good. So do I need to devote any more of my time or attention to trying to find sources or quotes that would help to answer this question? Move your heads this way. No, absolutely not. Um, I'm not worried about body paragraph one. But as I scroll down and I start to see, this is why I'm having you do this. This is why this is such a great idea. As I'm uh, moving down and we're looking at paragraph two and then we're looking at paragraph three, look at how many quotes I have. I mean, of course, no, I know that I only have three sources that I'm showing you here, but this is proof that I need to do more research, right? And I need to do really specific research. If these are questions that I fully intend on answering in my paper. So Roman number uh, two, what's the problem? What is colony collapse disorder? Okay, I can explain that in my own words. I can even paraphrase um, some of the quotes here if I wanted to, because it's not necessary to paraphrase everything and it's not necessary to quote everything word for word. So we're gonna strike a balance between the two and I'm gonna show you more about that in the next few weeks. But still, three quotes, that's it? That's a little spare. I think I want a little bit more about that. So I might need to now know that I need to go back and maybe find one or two other sources or do like some reading, read up a little bit more on colony collapse disorders so that I can create a really good background of information for my reader so that they know what I'm talking about. Um, and then also to show that I understand it to my reader in order to build some trust, to build some, um, some credibility. So that's Roman, that's um, Roman numeral two, that's body paragraph two. Okay, this is where it gets rough. So Roman numeral three, I only have two quotes. Honeybee disappearances, where have they occurred? Maybe I need to know more about this. Um, I wanna know a few things. And these are some of those sub questions I told you to include, right? And this is why you include them because it specifies what you need to do to prove this point to your reader. Um, if I'm gonna argue that this is a real global emergency and I'm going to say we really need to be caring about honeybee, honeybee uh, disappearances, try to say that three times fast, then um, I have some work to do because this is not enough to prove this point. Um, while you don't want to belabor the point to your reader, you still want to devote enough time and attention to it so that they know it's important. So for that reason, I would probably go back and know that I need to look at colony collapse disorder and do a search colony collapse disorder in Europe. And I would probably actually just put that right in the notes, colony collapse disorder in Europe. Um, and I would probably do, you know, in South America, uh, in Africa, you know, just all the, all the continents. I want to know all the continents. What can I get here? <laughs> you know, how do I paint this global view of this problem so that it's very clear? So that's, um, part of the reason that I'm having you do this so that before you go start writing, you never have to, once you start writing, you do not have to stop. You won't stop until you're finished with your paper. This is what's going to help you get there, okay? It's gonna let you know, I have great research for certain things and there's some research that's missing for some other things that are important that I need to discuss. So that's that Roman numeral, Roman numeral four. I've got three quotes. It might be enough, it might not be enough. It might be something that I wanna go look at um, as I'm trying to think about what more do I want to examine here. This is why I said search terms are so important and why I put such an emphasis on them in the beginning. So colony collapse disorder and of course, pesticides, um, colony collapse disorder and disease. I could also say colony collapse disorder and like virus or something like that. Um, probably disease is better. And then I could say colony collapse disorder and um, I could say um, 
disorders 